Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, i.e. Thinker, and this is my lovely partner Maggie, i.e. Thema. And today we are super excited to be doing a Kickstarter preview for the wonderful game by Nick McCollum, Brick and Mortar. Our brick and mortar is uh, about to launch on Kickstarter, if not already, and um, this is by uh, the publishing company Octorough, which is part octopus, part giraffe, yeah. which I appreciate. I yeah. love anything where it's like Yeah, you love things. a hybrid. Of I do love a hybrid. I do love a hybrid. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Uh, we are super excited because uh, we are looking at a demo version. So everything that you'll see in this video is a prototype. My understanding from Nick is that the game, the game's artwork is 99% there, which super happy about because yeah, the art very is nice. beautiful. Yes. Um, but of course, any other the components could be subject to change. So just bear that in mind when you're watching. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So brick and mortar and brick and mortar, you are an entrepreneur dealing in brick and mortar businesses. So you get to experience all the highs and the lows of running a physical business selling physical goods. So as part of that, you're going to be able to open stores, manage your stock and inventory, and hope that you make enough money at the end of the month to pay off all your bills, keep the lights on, and hopefully with a bit of extra money that you can then invest in very well earned and well deserved victory points. So how do we do it, Amy? Well, uh, the first of all, I want to say that I love the theme here. Um, you know, not one for theme, but the theme of this game is, you know, owning and running a retail store. And I think, you know, it's, it's very much based on the economics kind of principles of supply and demand. And for that reason, it makes it an absolute pleasure to learn and teach because it just is so intuitive. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we all feel very strongly about keeping brick and mortar stores open but now. here this is going to teach you about really how difficult that is because mm -hmm. there's lots of things that you need to consider now the way that the game works is that there are two real um, components that you need to keep your eye on the first is the market board where there are going to be goods available for sale for you to buy to put into your stores um, as well as um, consumer demands, so things that you're going to be able to ship from your stores. And then the other component is, of course, your personal player board, which houses all of the different types of stores or businesses that you have open at one time. And what's really cool about that is that it's so thematic um, mm. in terms of, you know, you're open, you're running a bakery and therefore you're shipping, um, you know, vegetables from that bakery or you're a jewelry collector. So you're shipping jewelry or you're an art collector and there's art. And so all of the stores make perfect thematic sense. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, what I love about the mechanic of it is that each store has a certain capacity of goods that you can hold. And so uh, as the game goes on, you need to be investing in opening new stores to be able to house certain types of goods. Mm -hmm. And now the, the types of goods, um, you wanna have as much as possible a monopoly on those types of goods because um, then you've got no competition in terms of buying them for cheap and selling them for the max price. Mm. And that's where this game gets really interesting. Um, all players have control over what goes into the supply. So you, you have market cards and they serve two purposes. One is to fulfill, fill up the supply so that then you can buy those goods or anyone else can buy those goods. And the second is to advertise and create demand for particular types of goods so that you can fulfill orders with the goods that you've bought. And that's where the player interaction mm -hmm. really starts to ramp up because this is a auction or bidding style mechanic. And the great thing about it is you're not only bidding to buy things. So you're saying, what is the highest price that I'm willing to buy to stock my stores? But then you're also bidding on what is the lowest price I'm willing to sell for in order to get rid of my supply <laughs> and to make money. And that's where it becomes really competitive mm -hmm. because um, other stores or people who have the same supplies to fulfill an order can undercut you. Yeah. And I think my competition. it's super competitive, mm -hmm. just like the real world. Mm -hmm. And I should say we've only played this at two players and in a two player game, it's certainly less competitive. Um, you can only have a maximum of four different stores which sell different types of goods. So the more players you would have, the more competition there would be for types of goods, but there would also that auction bidding as in any game that has 
bidding and auction mm. kind of mechanic, um, it becomes more fun and more interactive and more brutal <laughs> the more people that you have. Um, but I think my favorite, I just want to talk about my favorite yeah. mechanic, which is the surplus yeah, mechanic. Yeah, that's very clever. Oh, so clever, Nick. This is such a great little, one little rule mm. that if you offer to the market or you, you decide that you want to go in and bid um, to sell some of your products and that price is too high and everybody else gets to go first because they're offering to sell it cheaper. If they sell it, take up all of the demand and there's no demand left, but you said, no, I'm willing to give up some of my product. You actually lose that product. Altogether. The, the product zero. just goes. Well, back it's like to it's the, expired. Well, yeah, you put it out there. It didn't sell and it's gone and too no bad. One wants it now. And that yeah. is pretty brutal but i just love it i'm like oh that on a you know a three or four player game it would just be so fun to do that to <laughs> people devastate people and um the tension in this game comes in from not just buying and selling resources but also the fact that you need to buy victory points as maggie mentioned yeah. so you're trying to make as much money as you can to then buy victory points um to get yourself further along in the game and that's brilliant because obviously stores cost money goods to stock your stores cost money and so there's a constant tension of well do i buy lots of victory points or do i keep investing yeah. in my future gameplay yeah. so it's really clever exactly like in real life if you're running a business you always have that tension of do i reinvest in the business and make it more profitable or do i actually take home some do i take pay? home some money yeah and... do i actually like invest something in myself and buy some kickstarter games <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the other thing that i love about this is that in that by that putting money away there's a bit of a almost like a hidden lesson in that you the more you're trying to put away at once the more expensive it becomes yes. so it's really important essentially the the winner of this game is going to be who's the most the person who's most effective at putting that money away regularly mm -hmm. uh, or in the most clever best timing sort of way um so that yeah you can get that the, the victory marker um along but also not sacrifice the productivity of your shops as you're going in the middle of the game. Yeah, and I think the other thing you need to be wary of is that if you don't sell the inventory from your stores straight away, it's fine to buy it and to stock it, but if you can't get rid of it, it actually decays. Yeah, like it falls time. down over the shelves over time and then it falls off the store completely, um, which is you know symbolic of that good expiring mm -hmm. and um, now you can't sell it yeah. any longer. So there are many ways that you could really yeah. trip yourself up in this game. I also love the, for a game that is, it's, it feels relatively easy to teach. I totally agree. Yeah. I was surprised at the moment. I think it's sitting around a three in complexity on BGG. I think yeah. that's high, too high. Mm. I think that actually there is a lot going on here, mm. but because it's based on common sense principles on like, okay, I'm going to buy some apples mm. for a dollar and I'm going to sell them for six dollars. Mm. There's a little bit of maths that goes into it, of yeah. course, but I don't think that the game concept, the, the mechanics are particularly difficult. Yeah. But what I love about that, even though it's not, it doesn't really feel like that heavy or that difficult a game, there's actually a lot of replayability, which is one of the downfalls of a lot of the, the straightforward um, thematic type game sometimes it can be like well once I've done it once I know what to expect mm. in here one another clever thing is that the type of goods that you're selling can either be as essential and basic as your food and clothing or as uh, you're going more into the luxury areas of like electronics jewelry and art and obviously the more luxurious it is the more expensive it is to get that stock in the first place the more money you're gonna make when you sell them but the more unique or the more rare those items yeah, well, are. Yeah, well, the demand is so much lower and, yeah. it, and they appear less on the market cards, yeah. which means it's like, oh, do you just sell lots and lots yeah. of apples yeah. with small amounts of profit? Which means that you can actually, across multiple games, you can actually try different strategies. Go, I'm going to try and diversify and I'm going to try this game to do a little bit of everything and see how I go. Or, or we've had games where it's like, I'm going to try and just do lots of apples or lots of the kind of grocery or, yeah. or I've often gone, I want to try and go high end. What happens when you go high end if I'm selling art? It's like it's they're harder to come by. There's fewer of those um, options for those for those the supply and also for the demand. But when when you do get that payoff, if you don't happen to like if your stock doesn't end up expiring before then, oh man, is it a sweet sweet payoff? Oh, yeah, twenty five dollars yes. per piece of art. Oh. I think the final thing to mention is just the the quality of the artwork um, and the fact that each of the 
cards or the businesses are individual and they give you special powers as well. So mm. it's not just as simple as buying and selling in different types of stores, but some of the stores have different scoring conditions. They manipulate the game rules in different ways that allows you to um, get an advantage over mm. your competitors, but not in a way that feels unbalanced or broken. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like no matter, even though sometimes it seemed like you had quite a strong store with a great power, I found that I had some equally good benefit yeah. that was helping me in a different way. So mm-hmm. there was there was no like, yeah, I felt like it was very balanced in that regard. Yeah. Um, but the artwork, come back to the artwork. Oh. The artwork, the artist is uh, Tristan Rossen. And it is gorgeous. It's lots of fun. Yeah, it's reminiscent to me of like something like the networks. Yep. Like that kind of quirky, playful. really playful, fun style. And when you're dealing with like this kind of topic where it's all about buying yep. and selling, you're doing Money, maths ads, and stuff. Yeah. That that really adds to this game. I think mm. without it, it would be you know it would be dry. Like it it really yeah. adds personality and character. Another thing that I love about this game is about how if you ever run a business or if you've ever had the experience of running a business, you know how money can be so tight. And sometimes you feel like, woohoo, like we've come into some money. This is great. And all of a sudden, like a few days go by and go, how did the money all go so quickly? And that's exactly what happens here. Sometimes you have a great big payout. And then by the time you pay your utility bills and you put some money away for your your big three points, all of a sudden you go, "Uh oh. I've got no money again and I need to buy stock for my next round. And and I, I need to... Yeah, I don't know if this is going to change in, you know, this is only prototype, but at the moment the money is just like these cardboard. And when you have a lot of it, even though <laughs> these are ones, man, you feel rich. Yeah, You're like, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, I'm going to be buying some victory points. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this, ge- this game was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, I think that at two players... Um, there's probably limitations in terms of how tense it can be, mm-hmm. but I'm really looking forward to getting it onto the table um, for you know three or four players. Yeah. I think that's where it would really shine. Mm-hmm. I think if you enjoy auction and bidding mechanics, um, or you know, kind of utilizing a tableau of cards mm-hmm. um, to help you along, there's a lot to enjoy about this game. Yeah, I agree. yeah, it's def- definitely instant back for us, and yeah, so excited and happy um, to be able to preview it yeah. for you. So that's our preview of Brick and Mortar. Um, I should also note that we were not paid or incentivized in any way. Actually, I just reached out to Nick because I said, you know, congratulations, this looks like an amazing game. And he said, do you want to try it? And we Mm. said, yeah. And yeah, just so thrilled to get it on the table. Mm. Um, We think you'll really enjoy it as well. If you liked this review or um, games like this, Mm. feel free to please subscribe to our channel um, or hit the like button. It really helps us know what videos are Mm. resonating. Um, But Otherwise, bye for now.